everyone. I hope you're doing well. I'm going to be doing a little catch up today. I know I promised you to do a catch up after April ended. So when my parents, it was so, so hectic before my parents arrived for about, they stayed for about three weeks. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been, it's been a little while since they left. Um, I still feel a little bit strange talking about it. I've, I've thought many times to just pop in front of the camera and just do a bit of a vlog and talk about things and catch up about things. But there's just something that kept holding me slightly back. Um, obviously it's been a whole roller coaster of emotions and you know, on one side, you really look forward to see your parents who you haven't seen in years. And then there's also things that you start thinking, but they will be leaving, you know, soon. And when are you going to see them next? Yeah, it's uh, it's been a concoction of things. But mainly, of course, it was a very... For me personally, I think it was a very nice, nice time to have and I tried to create as many pleasant memories as I could throughout that visitation. They came for the first week, Mason was on half term and the other two weeks he went to school. So basically for the first week we ended up doing loads of things for like child friendly where he would have fun with his grandparents um, around him but mainly focused on him and then for the other two weeks um, I kind of was spending time with my parents and mainly my mom so yeah we had a little bit of us time and it was nice to be honest with you I, I managed to do things that I wouldn't normally have time for at all my mom is a hardcore shopper and um, I generally I, I shop like a man, I'm in and out, I go into a shop to get something that I want or something that I'm looking for, it would be like a pair of shoes, I'll go and I get it. Like it's very focused, I don't just go in and just look at everything, I, I can't do it, I get really tired from all the different, you know, rails of clothing and the colours and everything is just way too much for me, I just hate it. So for me, my thing is more having a cup of coffee somewhere, sitting in a nice place, looking out into a nice kind of picturesque street or something like that, that's more my thing. Or having, you know, a nice pizza with, with a nice glass of house red, that's more my thing and a good conversation to go with it. So yeah, we, we obviously we haven't seen each other and all three of us, my dad, my mom and me, we are so, so different. I really sometimes wonder how, I mean, I know so many families that are very like close knit. They think the same, they have the same opinions, they look the same. It's like, you know, they've been all cloned. <laughs> In our case, it couldn't be more opposite. Like it just is, a, a, a crash of personalities like very very different and yeah it, it can get a little bit overwhelming <laughs> so <laughs> but it's been fun mostly and um, maybe one day I'll go a bit more into detail but bittersweet as I said before because then I had to face them leaving again and although I I love my peace and quietness at home like I just love it when my husband is in in, in the London office, not the two days that he works from home making loads of noise with his coffee machine, but the ones that he's working in London and then Mason is in school. That's like my time for serenity. My brain just needs that peace and quiet. I love it. And I find myself really inspired during that time when I feel undistracted and uh, that serenity kind of lets uh, my or encourages my creativity to flow. So yeah, it's been it's been good fun, but it also incredibly incredibly tiring because three weeks it was non-stop, you know, entertaining, catering, doing all sorts of different things, taking them to different places. And yeah, like I said, I don't do that much at all. I probably do this much in like a year or something, or you know, maybe a few months, but 
yeah, it was all very concentrated because I wanted to achieve and, and take them to places and show them things as much as possible in those three weeks that I had with them. So it was very precious. Uh, one thing I will touch briefly on, it's kind of like a very touchy subject, <laughs> but when you grow up with someone who is very critical and it's not just critical of, of your work, but critical like of everyone, you know, it, you kind of grow up in this environment of constantly feeling, are you doing good enough? Because, you know, if everyone else is being so criticized, um, then, you know, maybe you're not, not doing a good enough job, whatever you're doing. And specifically, I'm talking about art right now. So I grew up uh, in an environment where I kind of never felt that whatever I did creatively. I did some really lovely creative writing when I was little and I also had a thing with colour since I was little. But I never kind of, you know, my parents never thought of taking me at young age to um, art school or to like a drawing school or something to help me develop those skills and I have been praised a lot by my teachers. And that's where I knew, I mean, it's still sitting within, in like inside me that I had that or I had those skills when I was little. And then somehow throughout the years, you just kind of stop maybe believing in yourself. You kind of lose it a little bit. And at one point, actually, when I was a teenager, I wanted to study art, like I wanted to go to an art school. And I remember my dad said to me, you think you're good at it? And that just like killed it for me because I thought, oh, maybe he's right. You know, what, like, am I a good painter? What, what do I do? Like, how am I going to study? And, you know, probably everyone is going to be so much better than me at art school. So yeah, I went into languages, so I became a linguist, but that didn't take me very far because I got so bored with my degree and eventually I went into studying film and I also studied media. So the journalism and the... It was a very creative course where we actually like designed our own website. I, I It was like beyond me because I was not into that sort of a thing. But we've worked in, in groups on these projects and I love like, you know, having like-minded people around me and there's just something that just clicked open inside. And I knew I had that creative side of me, but I just somehow had to unravel it. And, you know, years and years working then in fashion, this is why I ended up working in fashion magazines in London, and also later with beauty PR companies and businesses. We just like, I just enjoyed that work simply because it was such a creative outlet for me. But it wasn't creative enough because when you work for uh, a certain publication, you have to work within those rules or whatever. You can't just do your own thing. And I always knew I love to work for myself. And years later, fast forward, 2019, this is when I opened my business. So why am I telling you all of this? Is because I just wanted to reassure those of you who are perhaps young or maybe even in like all the age. I'm, I mean, I'm turning 40 this summer and it's a big one. So I had to do a lot of thinking this year and you have to believe in yourself no matter what your age is, no matter what your culture, what your gender is, none of this matters. You are a human being and you are creative. Like you have to think of it that way. But the thing that you also need to do is to nurture it. You know, you need to try to bring it out, try to elevate your skills. And how you do it is by looking around of people's art, artists' artwork that inspires you, that you can resonate with, um, that you can connect with and try to implement that in your own style. Try to interpret things uh, like color palettes, textures, scene setting, if it's an illustration, in your own way. And I think 
then you sort of start unlocking doors. It's like Alice in Wonderland. You just get the key and you just, you know, you work hard to get that key. And once you finally unlock the door, then it's like a whole new world opens up to you. So this is where I'm going with it. And um, yeah, there were a couple of situations where I currently have some of my unsold paintings downstairs displayed because I, I enjoy looking at them. I may actually end up hanging them in the house. I have loads of plain walls in the house that would look lovely if I had those paintings hung there. But I haven't had time to take off the price tags from the exhibition. And so they just sort of lay against the walls downstairs. And um, on the either the first day or, well, it was very close to that. My dad walked past one painting and he sort of made this remark that oh no one wanted to buy it for this much and like saying the price and sort of had this sort of laugh about it and and I felt like I was six again you know I felt all the way little and and kind of oh my gosh you know how as a grown woman can I be brought back to that time when I was criticized or when I was whenever I did any paintings or whatever none of it was ever good enough how is it possible but it's it really is. I mean, it took me a couple of weeks to settle everything, you know. It's something you have to go, like, deep inside you and understand this isn't you. This is someone's perception of of the world and this is how they see things. And you have to realise that you're wearing a different pair of glasses and you have a different set of eyes to see the world in your own colours, in your own... Gosh, I'm getting a bit emotional here. Right, crying in front of the camera, that's something I haven't done yet. Welcome to the YouTube creators world. Um, but yeah, um, I just want you to really, really feel it. I want you to feel that none of it m makes sense for you you know just just don't listen to it just block your ears because you can't change someone you can't and I think with age things actually get a little bit more saturated a little bit more concentrated and yeah you are you and you do you you know that's what I say you want them to see your art and kind of say something nice about it or something but you know it doesn't happen always it doesn't I make sure I learn from all of this and it's been years and years of this sort of creative torture where I would get an idea and then think oh but why why should I draw it I mean it's gonna end up rubbish anyway you know, and then you let the idea go. And it's just, and then it all becomes like bottled up. Your creativity starts to wilt a little bit like a flower because it doesn't get the oxygen, you know, it's like with a, with a lid screwed on, like in a jar. And it needs to thrive. It needs that oxygen. It needs to breathe and it needs the sun and it needs all sorts of things. So don't do that to yourself. I mean, I went through years of this to just realize that, that this is not my fault it's how the other person lives how they see things and um it can be very painful it can be very um you know this is why actually when i had some really harsh criticism not too often but i did have some people on youtube it, to me that's just like it just nothing because <laughs> What they don't know is I went through so much more, which to me mattered because that came from someone very close to me. But someone who I don't know and someone who just sits there and writes some like stupid stuff to maybe design to hurt someone or design to knock someone's confidence or whatever. To me, that's like nothing. And I hope you, if you're a creator or if you're not a creator, and you have someone like that in your family, it could be even your sibling, or you could be much older and you still live with that perception that you're not good enough or your art, I'm talking about your art, <laughs> your art is not good enough. Just 
you know, one day, wake up, get out of your bed, go to the art shop if you haven't yet, get some brushes, get some paint, get a canvas, just slap that paint onto the canvas and just express your emotions. Just, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it will come out ugly. It doesn't matter because you are going to slowly open up that lid on the jar and let the air in. And you need that. You need that to feel good about yourself. And where this experience, groundbreaking experience brought me, is I, as soon as uh, my parents left, I started creating. I started like just being more adventurous with things and kind of doing it like I felt like a rebel, you know? I would take that bright colored pencil and I would scribble on the paper. I would take something that would not be considered great or amazing and I would throw it onto the paper and I would start creating. And that passion, passion for color, passion for art, that is what really, really got me going. It's like, you know, it just, it's just ignited. It's just ignited the creativity inside me. And I feel quite, quite good. It took me a few weeks. I was very sort of emotionally unbalanced and I didn't know how I felt. Did I feel happy? Did I feel sad? Did I feel confused? Did I feel angry? Did I feel frustrated? What did I feel? It's It was like a bunch of emotions going through my mind and it took me a little bit of time to settle into that and just learn from the experience and yeah, you know, I I respect, I respect my dad for who he is, for his views, but they're not mine. I don't have to see the world like that. And um, I'm very thankful because I think if I did, it would be a very black and white world for me. And, you know, there's a lot of things that have to be taken into consideration. Like he has been raised in Soviet Union with that kind of typical Soviet mind where, by the way, he, he is, in my view, I as a child, I saw him as quite talented. I um, He had some sketchbooks that my grand grandmother, so his mother, would keep. And as a little girl, I'd love just to sit down and flip through and look at his art. His art was more like, like graphic design. He would draw cars really nicely. And then he had some oil paints and this and that, but he he actually went to uh, our school when, when he went to school, so when he was young, but he never persevered it. And years ago, I bought him a Windsor & Newton watercolor set in this like beautiful wood case. It was like a really, I mean, if someone gifted it to me, I'd feel very, very like happy with it and pleased. And, you know, I would definitely go get some paper and start creating again and I did it to bring out this side of him because he hasn't taken a pencil or a brush into his hand for decades absolute decades and I wanted to bring that side out of him regardless of how he made me feel throughout my childhood in in regards to art and uh, that <laughs> Actually, quite a few people. I, I did a video on that set, on that watercolor set. And quite a few people ended asking me, so how did he like it? And, you know, da, da, da. the reality of the fact is he never, ever even touched it. And I think my mom ended up squeezing out some tubes of paint or whatever. And I, I'm pretty sure they're probably dry by now. And somewhere... In a pile of things that are unwanted or not needed. So, oh, look, my eye is twitching now. <laughs> yeah, I really did not plan to go that deep into this. I don't know what, what got into me, but it is what it is, I guess. I am implementing on a new 
watercolor series. Now, I have tried to start up a few watercolor series before, but every time it was difficult to commit because they're very, they were very specific. And I don't know, just I think the idea of having like a specific themed series is something that I don't seem to be able to carry out for whatever reason, for too long at least. I've done a few series that, you know, were great and fun, but most of them, they just start and maybe after a few episodes, they just <laughs> end really. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to be very open here and it's not going to be anything in specific. It's just going to be watercolor Fridays. This is the name for it. And what we're going to do from, not from this week, but from the week, from the next week, we will have a video on Friday which is dedicated to watercolor. It'll be painting, it will be discussing different colors, it'll be mixing something interesting like different mixes, it will be maybe reviewing some watercolor products, whatever it will be, it will be watercolor related. So that for those of you who subscribed to this channel many many years ago for the watercolor, you know which day to uh, hit the channel, hit the like button and watch it uh, because at the minute it's it's been whatever I feel like and I can understand that it probably can be frustrating for at least some viewers that, you know, they don't get what they kind of came here for, if that makes sense. So I'm hoping to do that. And then on Mondays will be a video that I will do whatever I feel like. So, you know, illustration or botanical art or mixed media or whatever else comes into mind. Wednesdays, I don't think I'll have time for Wednesdays videos, but if I will have some extra content that I need to bring out, like a product release or maybe something extra, like, I don't know, a book review, I do have actually couple of books, two books sitting that were sent to me for reviews and there's one more coming. So I do need to do book reviews. So those I might throw in as a bonus video on Wednesday. So I will see how it goes. But basically from next week, it will be watercolor Fridays. So I hope you will enjoy that type of content and let me know what you think about it. Uh, another thing that's coming is a haul. So I've done a bit of um, art supplies shopping at the end of April and then again in the beginning of May. And I combined the two. It's all edited. It's all ready to go. I'm just kind of looking at the right time. It might be either Friday or Monday next week, but it's, it's coming soon for sure. I don't want to give you a definite date just because I need to look into the schedule of videos for this week and next week. And lastly, for those of you who are new, I no longer sell anything on Etsy. I sell things on my online shop, my new online shop on my website. So if you head to alionacreates.com, you'll find an online shop there. You click and it will take you to all the products that I have. I've done some restocks and so everything should be available there. If you have any questions, do let me know regarding some products uh, that you might be interested in or are anticipating. I'm always open to discussing those or things like commissions as well. If you don't know, I have done a commission to someone uh, who has been supporting me for years and years in, uh, in the US and it was a painting that this lady liked in my journal and I basically recreated that artwork for her so it's original artwork and then um, it, it was a commissioned work and I sent it off to her and she loves it so it makes it makes my heart smile for someone to enjoy my artwork given what you just heard before <laughs> but yeah uh, believe in yourself I'd say believe in yourself and just go with it you'll get there you'll get there one day for sure I know because I did. All right, I think that is it for today. I'm not sure how long the video is. I certainly, like I said, I didn't anticipate for it to be that long or that deep. So if you had to reach to a tissue, 
I'm sorry about it. I definitely had. So, um, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for all of your support, for your kind words. And that is what matters. It matters that we're building a community here, that we have a lovely place to come to. And I think where I will end this video is that this year there has been, apart from all of all of the things I just mentioned in the you know, all the mixed emotions and things. Something has been building inside me, like this sense of frustration with the world, you know, with the news, with what's going on around us, with like people, just everything was just getting to me. And I just, I just wasn't in a happy place. And I think this has been, you know, April has been an eye-opening experience to me, like, just opened it up and just let it go, you know, just released it all. And I feel so much more serene and happy with where I am creatively and where my mind is at. And that positivity, just cutting out negativity, I just, I was just complaining all the time. I think it started in March one thing after the other, it was the exhibition thing happened and the Etsy, the building of the website. It's been such a stressful few months that I just, that's it, you know, I, I'm done with it. I'm done with it. Serenity over here, no complaints. In fact, I'll wear my, for the next vlog, I'll try to wear, if I don't forget, my t-shirt, the queen t-shirt, which has the don't explain or don't complain don't explain uh quote so i'll wear that and this is my motto this is my motto for the rest of the year so i hope you were able to take something very important out of this vlog and something that will help you to just let go of it just let go of anything that might be holding you back in the creative sense and just go for it. Just go for it and enjoy yourself. That's what matters. Thanks so much for watching. On this note, I will end the video and I will see you next time.